Hello there, it's Chris here from Becker's Models and I've painted and chipped my two Tamiya Corsairs using the double layer hairspray technique and applying those paint colours that I researched in the previous video. Now painting two models at the same time can be a challenge but also twice the fun. So let's get started. First I applied this metal primer from Steinol Res over both models it gives the bottom layer of aluminium type chips and a nice shiny surface to work on. Next I applied two to three coats of the AK heavy chipping fluid. Now this stuff takes forever to dry in between coats and I did the worst thing possible and applied this during a thunderstorm. So with that humidity it just took all afternoon to dry. So yeah I prefer actual hairspray to this stuff I just want to get rid of it there's too much in the bottle. The first layer in this process is applying Tamiya XF4 Yellow Green, which is a great substitute for Chromate Yellow that was applied over those aluminium panels. Now after letting it dry, I use a nylon angle brush to first apply the water and then, using a stabbing and a light stippling motion, I to speckle the paint. Because as tight as that airbrushing is, it needs to be a little bit more random and a little bit more chippy. Is that a word? Chippy? Anyway, then I used an interdental brush, which is what I normally use to clean out my uh, airbrushes, to help make some microchips and longitudinal scratches, particularly on that wing root, wing root section up front. So on the wing root section here it's really easy to follow the lines of rivets that go back and across and just across on the panel lines with that interdental brush and you get some really nice tiny little chips. So this has to be all sealed in with some with a matte coat, I prefer dull coat two light layers and make sure you don't touch the model in between because the moisture on your fingers will reactivate the hairspray. Now time for the blues. The first layer of paint here is what I call FS35177, my adjusted base colour. You can see that Tamiya mix on the bottom of the screen there. And this is the darkest value of all the blues. I applied this first in a marble fashion over all the top surfaces. You can see there I've applied it over all the, uh, the horizontal areas and at the top where it's going to, uh, going to fade a little bit. And now we switch to a lighter value. Uh, this is FS35190. I've applied this inside that first layer of marbling, but particularly as a highlight on top of the fuselage and at the front of the wing. Now you can use a stencil here to, to help put down those random or marble sort of effects. I prefer to go a bit freehand here and there so make sure I don't repeat the pattern. So the next layer is of blue is FS35450. This is an even more desaturated blue but it's primarily on the outer wing and the ailerons. You can see I'm getting a real splotchy, splattery sort of surface going on there, which is quite normal. And then I go back over, particularly the gun access panels, with a slightly darker version of this colour, uh, just to increase that contrast, because you have to build as much contrast as you can uh, before we start doing the chipping. Some of the references for the bird cages showed a lot of splotches and literal just big dots of, of bad paint on the uh, leading edge of that wing, so I'm trying to replicate that there with the airbrush. Alright, let's get into some chipping. Same process as that first layer, I'm using the nylon angle brush, and I'm putting water over the surface there, and I'm using a bit too much water if I'm honest. Got to remember I'm thinning all my Tamiya paints here with X20A, which is a, an acrylic thinner. It's not very robust, so the paint comes up very quickly. So be very careful if you're going to use X20A and don't use as much water as I've shown you there.
Now using the edge of that nylon brush, I'm barely touching the surface there. I'm not scrubbing, I'm not pulling or pushing the paint around. I'm just getting the edges of those bristles to just quickly bring up, see how they're coming up, those chips are just appearing just as the bristles touch the paint. You can see on the left there how the paint has been, the hairspray layer has been activated and you're getting that sort of matty, sort of splodgy surface there. That will resolve and, and level out. But I'm just using the brush there to, uh, along the panel lines and where I can find obvious spots where the wear is going to be. Say that three times fast. Now I'm going to switch to my favourite instrument. This is a bent airbrush needle. We've all bent one of these before. Okay, and this is where I hit individual fasteners and individual rivets and just pulling up the paint just as they lie there and also inside the panel line so you can get especially on the uh, the wing fold mechanism there I worked on that as well because that's where you see a lot of chips on the references now try to make these chips asymmetric by that I mean don't have them in the same location on both wings change it up the only area where it is the same is on that uh, forward wing root area where the the crewmen service the engine but everywhere else you've got to change it up and put them in different spots you've got to diffuse the chips and put them in areas that make sense not just over the entire aircraft so here's the comparison between each wing you'll notice that there's a high contrast paint job on the uh, wing that hasn't been chipped yet Whereas the, the wing that I've just finished there, there's still a lot of variation, but they have, it has been crushed somewhat by the appearance of the yellow and the silver chips. So don't be afraid to pump up that contrast. I've also done some chips around the canopy frame and the access point there. And of course, on the front of the cowl. It's now time to paint the 1A Corsair with a much more complicated series of blues that I have to put down. And I realized when I was painting the birdcage that I should have painted the fabric sections on the outside of the wings first, so I didn't have to worry about masking over hairspray sections later. Here I'm using FS35190, which is actually the lightest value first. So I've put that over the fabric sections and I actually dotted it all over the airframe, particularly on the horizontal bits. and on the elevators and the ailerons. Now, next is the slightly darker 35109. Here I'm just simply filling in between the lower values and if you want, you can also use a stencil here. Again, you gotta be cautious about repeating that pattern. leading edge of the wings on the Corsairs seem to get that splotchy sort of uh, speckled sort of pattern more so than anywhere else so a stencil here does make sense. Now one of the great things about some of these new metal mask sets that are out is it gives you a nice crisp edge so you can quickly paint around those fabric sections and I didn't have to use any Tamiya tape masking to uh, which, you know, could pull up the paint and pull up all the hairspray that I've just put down. Moving to the ailerons, you can see the contrast difference here after I pull up that mask. And I actually ended up using this mask for streaking. That's supposed to be for wood grain effects, but I found that it, it gave a good sort of... Uh, well, it doesn't replace the oil weathering style, but it's, it's a good basis to just put down some basic streaks. Now the next value of blue that was applied was 35045 and I applied this very light, very very light layers. You can see I'm going over the, uh, the wing very quickly there. So that's uh, quite diluted again with the Tamiya X20A. And I just want to fill in all the areas of chroma yellow coming out because if it's too opaque it'll look too green. Yellow plus blue equals green. Here I'm hitting the lines in between the, the lines of extra rivets that I've added and I'll be filling that in with uh, some dark blotches and, and splatters because again we're slowly bringing up the darkness here on the inside wings which had a darker value than the outside. 
This is a thin layer that I'm playing down now. Applying down now. Or playing, you know, we like to play with paint. And it's slowly coming together. When I do this next time, I might experiment with darker tones underneath here. Because these uh, final blues just, I want to make the paint just a little bit more vibrant. Before I finish up, I forgot to uh, paint the intermediate blue uh, that's supposed to go alongside the fuselage there. So this is the FS35177 mix that I used on the birdcage. And uh, along the fuselage side there, I just I masked a line there and put some darker shadows down the bottom just to make it a bit variable. And then on the cowl, again, I got some struggling there with paint coverage on that very shiny metal primer. Again, I'll probably next time use a, a darker primer on top of that that metal, maybe a brown or a black, but eventually it comes along. Moving to the rudder post, uh, some of the reference photos showed some pretty serious chipping on the leading edge of that post. So I'm painting that again in the 35177 and a little bit of 35190. And you'll notice on the rudder, the fabric sections there, I've pre-shaded a little bit with insignia white. So I'm just filling that in to, uh, and also on the elevators, you can see that there. I'm just filling that in to, uh, to tie it all together, but I have added some Tamiya XF23 to the mix, just to desaturate those elevators a bit. They seem to fade to a different color compared to uh, the tailplanes. All right, so the darkest colors last. This is 35045, the gloss sea blue, in the adjusted state that it is. And the shadows of the wing roots um, were is where I put the coverage the most. And then up, up higher, I didn't do as much. I left it a little bit more opaque because it's going to be faded a little bit. Especially when next to that intermediate blue, I don't want the transition to be too stark. And then when I was putting the vertical uh, marks here on the, on the fuselage, I left a gap there around the fuel uh, tank just forward of the canopy because I'm going to add a, a fairly large streaking stain there on both sides. So I was careful not to cover too much of the, uh, the blotches that I put on underneath. Time to chip again. Same tool, same process. Although if you notice in the close up there, I got a hair mixed up in the, uh, I think it's a dog hair from Penny. <laughs> mixed up in the hairspray uh, level there. So anyway, you can see those added rivets that I've put there, particularly on that wing root section at the front, it's really added to the texture and I'm getting a pattern which is quite evident on all the reference photos of, uh, of Corsairs used in the South Pacific. Another tool I'm using here is the Tamiya Paint Scraper. Uh, paint Scraper, no, I, it's, it's used for scraping, but normally it's used for mixing. And because some of these rivets are a little bit flush of the surface, I can actually just drag that scraper along and catch all those rivets. But the airbrush needle comes out again and that's very, very handy just for picking out tiny little scratches and, and little effects. There's no such thing as too small a chip. Mike Rinaldi said that once, I believe. Moving to the tail, uh, to the rudder, uh, I've just doused that with some water and I'm just going to use the nylon brush there to, to just give it, to just expose that leading edge and then maybe just put a few little chips going in the direction of the airflow there. You can see that in quite a few reference photos that um, that post got, got worn away quite quickly. You can see those added rivets have really helped with making more texture and uh, the comparison shot shows how high the contrast has to be because it does get crushed once you expose that chromate yellow and the aluminium chips. So the final photos are here at the end, it's all done. Well, I'm all done with the pre-painting, the pre-painting. <laughs> the next is to add some walkway effects, the uh, markings, and then really get into the heavy weathering, which I just can't wait for. So thanks again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next and final episode of my Double Corsair build. Cheers.